Hello, today we're going to be going over to Hemisphere 24 RDHL to 2024, and we will be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Basically, you got this first switch here is going to be your light, so if you had to hook up at night, you can kind of see with. Your other one is how you're going to get on and off the tow vehicle, but how you level the camper from front to back. Do like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle. Make sure you're level from side to side. We like to recommend using a carpenter's level right inside the doorway. They do have stick on levels that you can stick on in the front and on the side of your coach to figure out if you're level or not. You may have to elevate one side or the other. Generally, you'll lay down some blocks and then use that tow vehicle to roll onto it. Kind of help to, you know, help you get this guy on there. Once you are level from side to side, then you unhook from the tow vehicle and level front to back using this guy here. Once you're level from front to back and side to side, then you'll lower your stabilizer jacks. Nice thing is these guys are motorized and these guys here, this one's gonna be for your front to extend them down and to bring them up. And then you'll have a switch in the back for the rear stabilizer jacks. They do also have an option here where for some reason the motor does quit working, you have the manual crank option and the tool is located inside. Next, we're gonna have our propane canisters. You got two 20 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what was used to test the propane system with. At this time, I do have this tank on, so it is reading green. Generally, if your tank is empty, right now I'm not calling for a demand of propane, so this ain't gonna change for me. But basically, this tank is closed. It would switch over to red, showing that there's no propane flow coming from this tank. This notch here tells you what tank you're even using right now. So right now I'm gonna put it back over here because this is the one that we are using. Generally this is set up so that you can have both tanks on. Once the one tank is empty, it will start drawing from the other tank. But you're not gonna know that that tank, your main tank is empty unless you come out here and look at this guy. Because it will be reading red for the tank that it's pointing at if it's empty. Then behind that we have our 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. You got your cap lights on here. This is gonna be controlled by a, a switch on the door side. We'll see that when we come around. If you come around to this side over here, we have to come on around my mm -hmm. nice camera lady. Basically, we're gonna have our battery disconnect. So basically, when we're storing the camper, you're gonna turn this guy and pull the key out. That way, nothing would potentially drain the battery. A lot of times, the 12 volt fridge will stay on, depending on the setting that is on. Sometimes, just trying to pull more power than what the solar panels can put out to charge that battery back up. Right next to that is where our solar panel controller is located. Uh, basically, it just monitors the battery and allows that current from the solar panels to come through to charge the battery when it needed. And then other data will send a lower voltage to help maintain the battery. These guys here are going to be locked with your black key. Next, we're gonna have our little outside shower area. You got the option of hot and cold water. Next, we're gonna have our water station. Basically, at the top is gonna be your black tank flush. As you see, there's a caution sticker there for that. That's basically telling you you need to make sure that the valve handle down here is in the open position. So basically, you're gonna have your sewer hose hooked up. That does not come with the coach, but your sewer hose comes with a clear elbow that goes into the ground whenever you're going to dump your tank or into the sewer connection. Basically, you'll turn that valve open. You'll see st st your nastiness coming out, although we're not trying to see it. But then from there, we're gonna go ahead and go get our hose. I always like recommend getting a black hose for this guy. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. But then you're gonna hook it up to the water spigot. I do like to recommend using a pressure regulator on there, uh, just because on the back side of this is a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. All right, but then from there, you'll hook up your hose, turn it on, and you'll basically start flushing the tank. It's a sprayer inside that black tank, sprays around, gets a lot of that nastiness out. Once you see that clear water coming out of the elbow, then you're gonna shut the water off at the spigot and unhook the hose from the spigot first, allow that water to drain out. Generally, there's a hose on the back side of this that goes to that check valve, but there's no pressure to push that water through, so it's gotta escape somehow. It's gonna come back out of that hose. Next, we got our city water hookup. With this, you want to make sure there's a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook up to this, you'll be ready to use the water system right away because we've got the on-demand water heater. 
Next is our fresh water connection. Basically, this is if you're filling a fresh water tank because the campsite doesn't have water for you. Basically, you're gonna hook up to this guy, fill the tank, read the monitor panel inside. When it says full, go ahead and shut this water off. Don't wait for water to start coming out of our white tubes I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. One is a breather tube, one is an overflow tube. Basically, we don't wanna to try to overfill that though because once it's overfilling, over, over time, they can cause damage to that tank. Once you've been do done doing the black tank, you would close your black handle and then you would open your grays and dump your gray tanks. Okay, don't open them all at the same time. You don't want none of that black nastiness try to back feed into your other tanks because then some smells can start coming through your, you know, your camper. We just don't want that. It's also labeled low point drain. These guys are actually kind of tucked underneath here a little bit. Where did I find them yesterday? They were off there. Oh, they're actually in line. So you got basically a red for hot, blue for cold. Uh, basically these guys here, you use these whenever you are winterizing your coach. I also like to use those when we're done camping. Basically open up those valves, open up some faucets in the coach as you drive home. That air is gonna blow through the lines, push any excess water out so no water's left in there that can become stagnant or bad. When that happens, then you gotta sanitize the lines and to do so with this style fill for your fresh tank, you have to put it, you're gonna have to pour the bleach into the hose, then hook it up and fill the tank, usually to about two thirds. You'll turn on your pump, you'll run water through the entire system until you kind of start smelling that bleach coming through there. Shut it off and wait for about a couple hours and then you're gonna basically sanitize. Basically, then you're gonna rinse out all that. Uh, usually you'll have to drain the tank, fill it, drain it. Usually you gotta do that a couple of times. Uh, for the water lines themselves, you can basically easily just hook up to the city water and just flush it through that way. We've got 30 amp power cord that does come with the coach. As we come this way here, in between, I believe it's in between our tires, we put it in a nice, great location for you. But basically, there's going to be where your drain is located. It's going to have the same style. Oh, here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and crawl underneath here and. I'll steal the camera from the camera lady so you guys try to get a little better visual. Basically, there it is right there. And I do still have some water in there, so open that to start draining that fresh water tank. This other hose that's here, like I was saying, is generally your overflow. And the one on the other side is usually your breather. They both usually kind of work in unison with each other. It's a lot easier to access with your slide rooms in. All right, as we come around here towards the back side, basically this is gonna be your uh, on-demand water heater. Basically the only thing I really gotta show you inside here is gonna be this switch right here. Right now I have this switch in the on position, so when we go inside, we're actually able to use the control panel inside. If this is in the off position, the control panel has no power on the inside. Whenever you go to winterize, this guy usually will also get winterized as well. Then as we come around the back, you got where you, your license plate goes. You can store your sewer hose here. Up above, it's pre-wired for an observational backup camera. It does also come with the on-the-go ladder receiver. So there's a basically a telescope ladder that could be aftermarket purchased that hooks onto there so you can get on your roof to inspect the roof. It is recommended you want to try to inspect your roof every 90 to 120 days. Make sure none of that lap sealant has created air bubbles from driving it down the road during hot days or over time it'll start drying out and cracking. When that happens, you want to try to clean that area with some soap water usually and uh, then seal back over that. You can usually do that a couple of times before it's recommended that you've got to completely peel it and do a fresh reseal. Next, you got your park cable and your satellite hookup. For the park cable, you do have to make sure the TV antenna booster is turned off inside, located behind the TV, and we'll show you that once we have stepped inside. Back here is going to be where you have your controls for the back stabilizer jacks. Bring them down, bring them up. This guy here, so you can hook up your dog if you had a dog, dog leash holder. We'll come back over here just in a momentarily. You've got an outside 110 hookup, GFCI protected. It says here to park cable, basically you can hook up your TV, by bring a TV outside, hook it up to this, and be able to watch TV outside. You got your speakers on, so you guys can hear those going. They do, I believe these have the LED lights in them. 
Those are, as you see, tied in with our awning lights. So whenever you turn on your awning lights, your, your stereos will light up, lights will light up as well. Do you got your vent here for the stove? This does have to be popped open when you go to use it, or else the fan inside ain't doing what it's supposed to do. Just make sure you close it when you're not using it to keep mud daubers out of there, things like that. Next, you're gonna have your furnace area here. As you, say, as you see here, it does say hot exhaust, and also says you don't want to block the openings. All right, you want it to be able to breathe properly. We do like to recommend getting mud dauber screens to put over these. Look like a couple of eyeballs go right over the top of this. Helps keep those mud daubers and wasps out of there from creating nest that can block it from properly breathing and create issues to where it has to be serviced. Next, we're gonna have our tires down below. These guys, you wanna make sure that they are torqued to 100 foot pounds and it's recommended that you do this at 50, 100, and 200 miles. I always like to say, usually when you leave the campground, a lot of times first place we're stopping is the gas station to refuel. Well, while you're refueling, you can check out these lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. Also, you wanna keep them topped off to their max PSI level. Nice thing is, is these are the Goodyear Endurance tires, so they actually have it in nice big letters for you on the side to tell you what you top them off to, which this guy is 65 PSI. You do have an outside sprayer here has different options for the sprayer in. And this is just a quick connect. Oh, as you see, I already have some water going through there. Inside here, you're gonna have our mini fridge outside here. Basically, you can set your setting here. You got off, cool, cold, and coldest. Uh, basically, when I did my Testing on this, I did it on the cold setting and it was actually hovering right around 33, 34 degrees. Uh, so that's actually a pretty good setting. If you notice it is freezing things, just kind of make that adjustment that you would need to on that. Next, we're gonna have our outside barbecue grill. Basically, this guy here would slide on and off. This here just lifts slightly, it comes off our rail. When you go to put it on, you come ahead at an angle, it'll slide on, slide this guy on. Options with the R key there if you want to lock it into place. Right through these holes, it's on each side. But then you got your quick connect, quick connect fitting back here in the back. And then down below, it's gonna be where you would connect when you're gonna use it. This right here is gonna be your off position. You would turn this in the on position for that propane flow to come through the line. Whenever, you got to turn it to that off position for it to release as well, just like so. But once you got your propane flow going, basically you're just going to go like this, turn, turn. It usually takes a couple of lights before it'll actually fire up and get going. It's obviously not going to light because I unhooked it. All right. Next, we got our secondary door right here. Uh, basically, it just goes into the bedroom. Right here, if you can try to avoid taking this sticker off or... You know, it happens because stickers don't last forever. But this here is so, if you were to lose your keys, this tells you what door key is for this door so you can get a new one ordered. The red one, red knob is gonna be for your deadbolt, so you can lock the deadbolt. And these are gonna be controlled with the purple key. As you see, you got two purple keys, one for each door. I gotta take a quick look here. So for your door handle, you're going to turn the key to the right. Basically, it locks the handle. You're able to pull the key out. For the deadbolt, you got to turn the key to the left. You'll hear it click, but you're unable to pull that key out. You have to turn it straight up and down to pull that key out. If you go to turn it to the right thinking you locked your deadbolt and you're able to pull the key out, that shows you did not lock your deadbolt. Our steps here, basically, these guys just fold and fold, and that's all there is with these. Then we have our other side of our compartment here, basically the manual crank for our tongue jack I was telling you about. Manual crank here as well, basically for, I believe that is for one of these, to bring a slide room in. No. It's probably going to, I think this one was for... Hmm. Jacks? I don't quite remember if that one, yeah, I think that one might be for Jacks. Our switch here for the uh, front cap lights, 
this light here so you can see. And then we got our griddle top right there for our outside griddle. All right, as we come back to the entry door over here, as you see our steps are a little different. One thing you have to note with these guys is that you always do want to make sure these are as flat with the threshold as possible. As you see, there's actually a decent little gap right there. Same here on the other side. So to, to basically do so, we're just gonna, there's a little, there's this up here to show you. We got these guys right here to adjust your feet. Most times people will leave them all the way down, they'll bring out the steps. You want to basically just sit on that threshold. See how that's a lot more flush with that threshold now. Looks pretty good. We're going to go with that. All right. Too much of an elevation on this can cause issues with both the screen door and the entry door if you're not careful. Here's our other sticker right here for this back door in case you lose your key. It is a G352. Your other one was a G367. All right, as we step inside, you're gonna have your fire extinguisher located right here. This is gonna be your control panel for the on-demand water heater. Right now it's on. It's telling me the water in there is at 78 degrees. This is your temperature adjustment. It only goes as high as 122 degrees. If you prefer, you can put it on Celsius. Next, you're going to have your control panel. <clears throat> so with the control panel, it's going to tell you the status of your fresh tank. As you see, we're draining that tank now. Still got a little bit of water in there. Your battery, it's reading full. Black tank's empty. Gray 1 is empty and gray 2 is empty. You do not have an auxiliary. Apologize for that. Spam likely. Next, you're going to have your water pump. This guy here is your tank heater. So basically, these have heating pads on the bottom of the tanks. Once the tanks get to a certain temperature, they'll automatically come on, and they automatically shut off on their own as long as this switch is in that on position. Then you got this guy here. It's going to be for your awning lights and your inside lights right here for the living room area. Then you got your switch here to bring your awning in and out. Go ahead and bring that out a little bit. You do have to make sure that bedroom door is closed because it, it, it will get in the way of your awning arm. It is a little breezy. I'm not going to bring this guy out too far. Basically, I'm opening it up to show you this guy right here. Basically, you can grab right here and pull down and it will create a pitch on the awning. It, it's meant to be as a shade protectant. They do say that anytime you're, the camper is not being attended to, you should have your awning brought in just to make sure because any kind of pop-up storm or strong gust of wind can cause damage to both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. And then your other switch is going to bring your slide room in or out. Oh, I did write it down for you guys. Gray tank one is for the bathroom sink and shower. And gray tank two is going to be just your kitchen sink. Leave that in here for you guys. This guy here is going to be, that contains most of the manuals for appliances in the coach. Uh, if there ain't a manual in here, most of them may have went online. Uh, basically, they have done that. I left that sticker up there. You kind of scan that QR code there. And uh, and then you are able to download, put in camper information, or download a manual to your phone. Next, we've got the TV located up here. Before we turn this guy on, this here, we'll release it so you can pull it out. And then you're able to... Tilt it and turn it. Oh, we're on the other side. But right here on the other side is going to be right where that TV antenna booster is located I was telling you about. There's a green light telling you that that booster is on. Basically, just turn that feed off so the cable signal would come through. You turn it off. And then if you're doing satellite, up above. This does have to be on for your radio signal as well. So which TV, you'll turn this guy on. This might take a minute because it is actually a smart TV. Oh, look at that, way to make me look like a liar. Thank you very much.
It is a smart TV. Maybe it's, it's smarter smart, than you. <laughs> it's a smart TV. Most times when I usually first turn these guys on, it goes through its whole load up sequence and takes you to other things. All right. So usually whenever you get to your destination, if you're not near the St. Louis area, you would have to rescan for channels. Basically to rescan for channels, you got the three light, the three white lines right there. You're going to push that guy. It's going to pull up your menu. Then you're going to push all the way over to the very end where it says settings. Hit OK. You'll go down to channel. Hit OK again. Channel sources. Hit OK again. From there, you hit OK. From there, it's going to ask you, are we searching on the antenna, the cable, or we can skip. We're going to go ahead and skip because we're not going to get into this. Uh, basically, though, if you're doing a campground cable, switch it to that. Let's see here. I believe down here, you have to go down to channel installation mode and also switch it to cable as well. And then scan for your channels. Next, we do got the radio down below here. I had speaker zone two is just your outside speakers. Speaker zone one is our inside speaker. Does have different modes for it. Uh, a lot of times uh, you can, it's got a Bluetooth mode so you can sync your phone to it. It does say you can hook the TV up, DVD players, things along that nature. They did run the wires to hook this up, but basically this style TV does not have basically like the digital like the surround sound hookups on the back it's only got the hookups like if you're trying to hook up a dvd player or something like that so it's not necessarily giving you that sound from the tv to the radio they didn't quite think that one all the way through at the factory sorry <laughs> uh next you're gonna have your remote for the fireplace you got your power switch turn it on temperature setting which is usually double zero is an ambiance look um, then low and high temperature setting you can change the color of the rocks and the color of the flames Let's shut this door here so you guys can see that a little better uh, so this one here is changing the color of the rocks so you can have blue white four transitions between all the colors and then number one is orange and then your flames, like right now we got it in one where it's the blue and the orange. You can have just orange, just blue, or four transitions between the orange, the blue, and then into both of them. Nice little looking thing there, but then in the temperature setting, double zero is that ambiance, low and high. And basically it comes right out of your fan part up there. And then turn that guy off. All right, we do got storage all up above in the counters and down below here and underneath the sink. We're going to have the microwave up top. Basically, microwave is pretty self-explanatory. I do like to say set the timer or the clock on this guy. You go out, you come back, you see the time ain't set on this. It tells you there's a power failure at the campsite. You do want to look and see if it was from the campsite itself or from the electric company. If you're at an RV park where there's generally a bigger amount of campers there, um, it would not hurt to have a surge protector because uh, usually when there's a whole lot of campers hooked up, you're liable to experience that. Now, one thing to note though is with the surge protector is that uh, try your best not to get a low end one. And when I say low end, the low ends are usually from 100 to 200 dollars. You want to get something a little more high end. Uh, they usually last longer and they they're they're better. Uh, you get what you pay for is the best way to kind of look at that. Uh, Next, you got your hood range for your fan and your light. Down below is going to be where our stove is. This is not a glass stove top. This is to be lifted every time you go to use it. Make sure you always got your fan on when you're going to be using the stove part itself. Basically, turn to the flame icon and turn it on. Then from there, you're able to set your setting to what you would desire. For the oven same concept you're going to turn it to that flame icon generally if you angle this just right you can usually kind of see the spark off the glass here and then you can see when it's lit and then once it's lit 
There it goes. Wasn't quite catching it off that glass. Once it's lit, you hold it for five, uh, seven to 10 seconds. Then you're able to take it and set your temperature. And there you see it just lit on up. And then right on the end, you got ambiance lights for the top. That's gonna be setting mode one. Two is gonna be the ambiance light and the light for the oven. I still have a little bit of water left in there so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the hot water so basically let's see if it'll do it for us real quick you kind of come over here you'll see that it's lighting up showing you like a shower the fans going and the flame icon saying that I'm heating up getting heating that water up to temperature but we are gonna be getting pretty close to empty so I can hear that pump that pump trying trying to pull up what water it's got left in there but that water will start to get hot after a few moments time. She's trying to suck water right there. Oh, uh, you got your GFCI outlet. You got one there and one up here above. You do have lights underneath here also so you can turn them on, lighten up the area. You even got a fourth one underneath here as well. So you really light this up if you want some stuff. Uh, next we're gonna have our thermostat here. So with a thermostat, let me go ahead and turn this guy off so you can see it a little better. Whenever you're going to choose, choose your options, you're going to first push this guy in. It's going to light it up saying, hey, you're waking me up. Then you're going to hit it again. From there, you got your options of cool, heat, and it has cool heat. We'll talk about that feature in a minute, but basically you'll choose cool. You're going to hit your button. You're going to make sure that this says auto high. It does have low auto, and then it has just high and low. In the high and low setting, the fan, uh, air conditioner will just continue to run. You hit OK. And then from there, you set your temperature to what you like, but you do have to push that button to acknowledge, hey, that's what I'm changing my temperature to. And then same thing for heat. Push it, set your temperature, hit OK again. So now with the cool heat option, so basically what that guy will do, turn that Basically, what the cool heat option does is that, it, say you're in like New Mexico or Arizona where it's hot during the day and cold at night, or as the camera lady said earlier today, that uh, Missouri spring where it's 30 degrees in the morning and 70 in the afternoon. Um, basically, with that cool heat, as long as the propane tanks are on, what it will do is it will cycle between the air conditioner and the furnace to keep it a sustained, a sustained temperature in the coach. Very cool. Very nice option, honestly. Uh, then you got an extendable table here. Do make sure that this is down whenever you go to bring a slide room in so you ain't causing damage and damage can occur. This gets broken, this gets broken. This whole piece uh, this is holding will get broken. I have actually seen that happen before. Uh, two levels here at the bottom to release. I have seen it happen uh, from a cleaning from a cleaning individual, not from not from here. Um, but left this open, brought a slide room in, did all kinds of damage on the camper. Uh, you got your sliding door here. Basically, this just releases and slides over. It's got a magnetic catch. Do you got your light switch here for the bathroom. Your vent fan is manual. Just open and then hit your switch to turn it on. Our toilet here, basically, you're going to make sure there's water in the bowl of the toilet. Whenever you go to do your business, you would lightly press on the pedestal. And you can add some water to it. All the way down, it's going to flush. Whenever you go to first use this, I do always recommend getting a cleaning chemical to put in the tank. Usually about a gallon of water. And then you're, if you're going to use a liquid, you're going to go two ounces of the liquid. You can either go one, two, or you can buy a one or two ounce shot glass to keep in the medicine cabinet. Make you feel like you're getting the toilet drunk. You put that in there with a gallon of water, you'll be ready to go. If you're using the pouches, I do always recommend try to fill the bowl probably a little more water than what's in here now, or maybe right around there, but put that pouch in there. Make sure that pouch dissolves. I have seen it where pouches have not dissolved, okay? Then it's not doing its job like it's supposed to. Then we got our shower. Uh, basically, it's got a stopper on it to try to reduce the flow of hot water. So when you're taking a shower, nice thing is you got the on-demand water heater. So you do get a nice little longer shower if you need to, as long as the water pressure is strong enough. Uh, this guy here basically closes. I always like to do this with a test because you know we're always moving around when we're scrubbing. We're liable to hit it with our elbow. 
whenever you go to open this guy, don't try to pull it forward slightly, pull it towards you from the inside to release it. And then you're gonna help guide it back. And then on the other side, we got our medicine cabinets, our sink. We got storage underneath here. We got to take this panel off here to show you guys. Basically under this panel right here is gonna be where you would winterize your coach. Uh, basically, there's going to be a valve that you would churn. Basically, it stops the flow from the fresh water tank, and you'll have a hose in here that goes into your gallon jugs of antifreeze. Then you're going to use the water pump to winterize the coach. Whenever you go to winterize, always start from the furthest place and then work your way closer to the water pump. So generally, if you got an outside sprayer, that's where you're going to start, or you're going to start here in the kitchen or outside, things along that nature. But basically, you're going to start from the furthest, work to the closest, always start with the hot side first and then the cold side and then as we step into the bedroom area here you're gonna have your other door there um, their cabinets are, or your closets on each side there's quite a bit of storage there but each side has a 110 and USB hookup <clears throat> basically designed for charging or if you had a CPAP machine things along that nature you also do got a drawer right here on each side as well Nice little feature about this guy is right here is going to be a switch where you're actually able to elevate the bed for those for those spouses that snore. You can elevate it up and then you got your switch there. Down here is going to be where our fuse control panel box is located. So basically in this guy, everything that operates off the sure power you got to be plugged in to use is all going to be right here on your breakers and they do got them labeled for you. Everything that runs off the battery is going to be on the, tw on the fuses. And they got those all labeled for you as well. This guy here is considered to be your fire exit window. This is magnetic. Basically, though, this guy here is designed to open up. It's on a hinge, so if you had to get out because you couldn't make your way to the door, you can easily get out. Nice thing there. You got shade, night, or vice versa. All right, and then this is also a sliding pocket door as well. Just make sure these guys are locked on travel. Come back through here, make sure we're not. All right, next on our slide here, we're gonna have your closet space here, our storage space here, top and bottom. Then we're gonna have our fridge. I don't wanna to touch it, I did a really good job cleaning it. <laughs> on the does. outside anyways. It looks good. <laughs> Uh, inside here, there's a little square piece. Basically, a square piece would sit right in here. And what that does is it actually vents these doors, kind of leaves them propped open whenever you're storing the camper. So that way, mildew or mold won't start to form inside. This guy, right now, I have it in this setting right here when I did my temperature readings, uh, which I had really good readings there. If you had to, you can turn it up a couple more. This is also designed so if you're boondock camping, so you're at a site that doesn't provide electric, so you're running off that solar panel, it does have a what they call off-grid mode, these two little settings here, where it'll help keep that fridge right in the temperature range that it needs to be in, but it's not trying to pull as much power. Next, we're going to have our recliners. The recliners are actually really nice. Right here on the side is going to be your handle, so where you would pull. And then you can just kick on back and just enjoy your show and relax. And do you got your cup holders here? Double tap, turns them on. Double tap, turns them off. Only on the outside ones. These ones here do not light up. And it does also light up a bottom LED light as well. Inside here, you gotta have a USB hookup so you can charge your phones. And then inside here is where I do like to leave our remotes. These guys right here. Stick them on in there. And then we got our nice little dinette seating area. Uh, you do have the ambiance lights up above. It has a USB hookup and 110 hookup also. But with this guy, it's pretty nice and neat. Basically, all you need to do is you're going to remove all these cushions here. You do have not, this. That's the that's the more harder part is getting all these cushions out of your way. But basically, you just release this top part here, release the bottom, and then you just kind of push this guy down. Once it's sitting down, all the way down past the cushions and stuff. You basically push these in to re-lock them. And then you fill in your cushions. You put your cushions there. Those back cushion pieces will fill in this area here. It's really nice. And 
and release. It seems like it doesn't want. Usually, these guys these guys will glide pretty easily for you. Uh, but I noticed that there was a lot of wobble when I first came in here. So I basically what I did is I opened this up right here and I tightened these bolts right here. So if it seems like it doesn't want to glide real easy for you, you can just loosen it. Because generally whenever you let go, it should glide right back up for you in that position. But like I said, I had it a little tighter. So because right there, it's already kind of nice and tight already. Where they had it, generally right there. There's a lot of wobble in this seat there. So I just like to tighten that guy up. It makes it good and stiff, and then you get a little better table down. Same with the bottom one as well. And then you do have storage under each, each bench seat. They do make it to where, even in the back, you're able to lift those guys up and have some store, you know, storage there. All right, so from there, we have made our way around the door, or around our coach. Uh, hopefully, this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us. And we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.